Arcades, been dead since the 80s, right? A relic of the past, outshined by home consoles, gaming PCs, even your cell phone. So who in 2022 would want to play at an arcade? <laughs> Turns out, a ton of people. I'm Graham Pooh Bear, and this is Otherworld. Welcome to Otherworld, a show in which we spotlight underground gaming scenes and the communities that drive them. Killer Queen pits two teams of five players against each other in this bug and bear themed action strategy game. Each team is assigned one queen player who must be protected at all costs by four worker players. One team wins when one of three possible victory conditions are met. A military victory obtained by killing the opposing team's queen three times in order to end the game. Economic victory, achieved when one team can fill their hive with berries found around the game map. Only workers can collect berries, and each can only carry one berry at a time. Snail victory, obviously the slowest means of a win, but often the least suspected. Both teams can compete in a sluggish game of tug of war by riding the giant snail on the map into the respective team's goal. Sounds like a lot to keep track of, right? When new players first discover the game, oftentimes they learn that the fastest way to win is to chase the queen around and kill her. And so the first meta that develops is that you just get everyone just throwing themselves at the queen. Killer Queen got its start as a physical field game designed for the Come Out and Play Festival in New York City, an annual showcase of innovative new social games where it walked away with awards for most strategic and best in fest. Necros and Debonis understood Killer Queen's communal nature and began work on a prototype cabinet after making a bet with NYU professor Charles Pratt. The Killer Queen developers adapted the communal nature of the field game to an arcade cabinet. After a successful debut on a tour of arcades and video game trade shows like IndieCade, GDC, where I first played it, and more, Necros and Debonis released the first cabinets in Chicago and Portland before expanding to even more bars, arcades, and barcades across the country where it exploded in popularity. Uh, Killer Queen, in my opinion, is incredible. And where there's an amazing team game, there's bound to be a competitive scene. The Killer Queen community is full of different leagues, tournaments, and all sorts of fun competition, but none as big as Bumble Bash, the official Killer Queen tournament hosted by Bumble Bear Games themselves, has seen exponential growth since its start back in 2016. See this madness behind me. You can see the madness. It's just a mess. They certainly designed the game to be beginner friendly and easy to pick up, easy to play. It's just one button, one little joystick. But the thing that keeps people coming back is the competitive scene. With the world slowly opening up, people are still trying to figure out if they shake someone's hand upon the first time meeting them, let alone play a giant arcade cabinet filled with nine strangers. But it's games like Killer Queen that remind us how to have fun again. Some may have no trouble jumping back into the thick of it. Natural born extroverts making friends everywhere they go. But others could use a little help of an icebreaker. And that's what Killer Queen and its community do best. So if you'll excuse me, I'm keeping everyone waiting. Yeah, I mean, welcome to the gold team. The gold team. You're on yeah. the gold team. You're on the gold team. Yeah. And you know which character you are by uh, just where you're standing. All right, you're already cruising. You're up speed and warrior. Nice. Oh, and he's hungry. Yeah. Oh, oh nice. Right. You, got, you got the hover. Got it. Well, you're already way ahead of the game. Yeah, so so explain why this is so important though here, this hovering that I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, right now, no one can kill you from a, above yeah. because you're on the ceiling. Mm -hmm. Now we're just we're bouncing off each other. Every time we bounce off each other, we're stunned. I can't do anything until just a certain amount of time passes, and then if you can pincer, because ah! <laughs> she was going for the pincer, get on the other uh... side as the warrior, the queen will bump the queen. So yeah, if you get there, yeah, now you're, you're in position. Okay. Nice! Ooh, that was sick. Yeah, okay. that was sick. Okay, yeah, there, there it is! Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, the next move to learn would be the stick. Okay. So, the easy way to learn the stick, I think, is to stand on one of these platforms. Okay. And then uh, do three taps as fast as you can. But oh, only you, you three. Are, you stick to the ceiling. Your parabola is going like this. Oh! You read this, so you just go. Yeah, you let go. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, you just did it! Oh, yeah, that was sick. Oh, 
Okay, what's the J-dive? The J-dive is when you're falling and you want to go under this platform but immediately be like at the ceiling That's doing that scrape. It's pretty oh, tough. Yeah. You can like kind of push your shoulder into it and be pushing a little early. Hey, oh, that was really good! Okay, yes. That was close, yeah, that was close. close. Okay, do we want to play against another team? Oh yeah, absolutely. All right, let's All right, get them in, here. in here. So we've got some players from the local scene here to play against us. Mm -hmm. uh, Minnesota's finest. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. what do you think? Are you ready? I, I'm i as ready as I'm ever going to be. I mean, we got to do this. <laughs> I mean, right. I'm expecting dubs over here. Oh, yeah. No going easy over there, all right? <laughs> all, right? all right? We're getting dubs. All right. Killer Queen, and I got some new friends here with me. Why don't y'all introduce yourselves? Uh, hi, my name is Michelle, aka Bombshell. I'm Chris Baldwin, uh, and I'm Jay, aka Zoomers. How did y'all get started in Killer Queen? I started playing because I had a boyfriend that worked here at the time. He had something to do while he was working, and the game looked fun. I started <laughs> playing, but I like resisted getting involved in the community. Like someone was like, "You should join the Facebook group. We play all the time." <laughs> I was like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! That's too far." And then, lo and behold. I joined the group and I just kept playing. It was just so much fun. Uh, I had seen it in San Francisco at a different arcade bar mm -hmm. and I didn't even play it. There was just a huge screen above it and there was a ton of people around it. It looked amazing and when I heard Updown was gonna have it, I did all the research. I figured out how the game was gonna be played. 
and I was here the first day that they installed it. I just came in randomly one day. I <laughs> uh, didn't hear about it before, but I came in with four friends, and I remember we were kind of scouting the games we knew from like childhood. We found this game. It was I was like, hey guys, it's five versus five. I'm like, there's five of us. We should play, and we ended up playing six hours that night. <laughs> shut down, shut down the bar, all of us together. Did not leave the machine, and uh, yeah, we played together for years after. So tell me a little bit about the scene here. I want to get, I want to get everyone's take on it. But like, what makes the Minnesota scene really special? I think we have a really big community. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of people that come out. So uh, Wednesdays are our free play night, and any given Wednesday, there's going to be what 20, 30 people out, mm -hmm. um, which yeah. other cities often can barely get a dozen or so people. So there's always a lot. Of people out. Shade. Oh, super <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's true. Now, you guys have been playing for a while, and, and Killer Queen has had a bit of an evolution of metas, you know what I mean? Um, Tell us a little bit about maybe like maybe delve into that history of it. Um, I think you know anyone is, who starts playing berries is just the easy thing to do. Yes. That's how you instruct new players. Hey, just grab these berries, jump in your hive, just keep doing that. So I think any scene too that starts up, that's kind of the initial meta, and then you start getting more comfortable flying, and then it starts to evolve into snail. Um, and I feel like a good example of that is when the dusk map came out. I remember the meta was strictly berries. Berries is how you win this map. Like, no one was messing with the snail, and now, years later, it's snail. It's snail. <laughs> it is yeah. purely snail, all maps. Like, where would you want to see this kind of scene grow? I would love to see the game leave the United States. It's made here. Oh, that'd be cool. It's where all the cabs are. You can only play it here, but it'd be really cool to see in Europe. It'd be really cool to see in Asia. I think if it was in South Korea, it'd be pretty cool. I'm Graham Pooh Bear, and that was Otherworld. What other awesome communities should we cover? Let us know, and be sure to subscribe for more.